I am Ramesh and I am going to take you through an exciting topic of mathematics. And the name of the topic is Pythagoras theorem. Now from the name itself, this theorem is called as Pythagoras theorem. Why? Because this theorem was invented, was discovered by this great Greek mathematician Pythagoras. Now we know that every theorem has a statement. Likewise, this theorem also has a statement. What is that statement? Let's understand. The statement says that in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. What do you mean by this? Let's understand. It says in a right angle triangle. That means, first of all, we need to have a right angle triangle. So let's consider a triangle. Is this triangle a right angle triangle? No. Now, is it a right angle triangle? Yes, because one angle is 90. So now we say in triangle ABC, angle ABC is 90 degree. That is how you write about a right angle triangle. It says the square of the hypotenuse. When we say hypotenuse, hypotenuse is the side opposite to 90 degree angle. That means opposite to the right angle. So it says square of the hypotenuse. That means AC square is equal to. So we write equal to, equal to sum. Sum means addition, that is plus, of the squares of the remaining two sides. Now, which are the remaining two sides? It is AB and BC. So, we write AB square plus BC square. That is nothing but the application. That is the understanding which we had from this particular theorem. So, we understood. So, one thing is clear. This theorem is applicable only in a right angle triangle. So, in a right angle triangle, it says that square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. So that means Pythagoras gave us the relation between the length of the three sides of a right angle triangle. Now you say we have the theorem. When are we going to apply this? Very simple. In any right angle triangle, if you know the length of two sides, we can find the length of the third side by using this theorem. Very simple. If you know the length of AB and BC, we can find AC. If you know the length of AC and AB, we can find BC. If you know the length of AC and BC, you can find the length of AB. That simple it is. Very easy, right? But whenever we represent, whenever we write Pythagoras theorem, apply Pythagoras theorem in any sum, we're supposed to write it this way. First write the name of the triangle, then write which angle is 90 degree, and then we write the next step, that is hypotenuse square is equal to sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. And once we write this into bracket, we'll write the reason as Pythagoras theorem. It's that easy, right? Very simple. Let's learn something else which came from the same Pythagoras theorem and that is called as Pythagorean triplet. What is that? Now when you say triplet, it is nothing but three, right? But what is Pythagorean triplet? We are talking about a triplet of natural numbers. But we have to understand that when is a triplet of natural numbers called as Pythagorean triplet. Let's understand this. That is what is given here. It is a very simple thing. It says that in a triplet of natural numbers, that means in a group, in a set of three, right? Triplet means three. In a set of three natural numbers, if the square of the largest number is equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining two numbers, then the triplet is called a Pythagorean triplet. That's very easy, right? When we talk about Pythagoras theorem, we just said square of the hypotenuse. And remember, in a right angle triangle, hypotenuse is the longest side right that is why it's the same applies here a triplet is said to be a pythagorean triplet if the square of the largest number is equal to sum of the squares of the remaining two numbers then we say yes that triplet is a pythagorean triplet let's understand here yeah? i'll give you a triplet and that triplet is 11 60 61. we need to check whether this triplet is a pythagorean triplet so what do we do we pick up the largest number. Now, what is the largest natural number here? 61. So, take the square of that. 61 square. When we do that, when we multiply 61 into 61, we get 3721. Let's say that's our result number 1. Now, what are we supposed to do? Sum of the squares of the remaining two numbers. Which are the remaining two numbers? It is 11 and 60. Let's do that. 11 square plus 60 square. We have to do sum of the squares of the remaining two numbers. What is 11 square? 11 square is 121. What is 60 square? It is 3600. When we add it, what do we get? We get 3721. Beautiful. And that is nothing but our result number two. Observe result number two and result number one. 
the values are equal that means we are saying that 61 square is equal to 11 square plus 60 square isn't it from where did we get that we got it from 1 and 2 that means now we can say that this triplet that is 11 60 61 is a Pythagorean triplet was that easy so that means if you are given a triplet of natural numbers and they ask you find whether this is a Pythagorean triplet now we know how to do it just take the largest number take the square of that mark it as result number one then do the sum of the squares of the remaining two numbers mark it as result number two if you get them equal it is a Pythagorean triplet if it is not equal then it is not a Pythagorean triplet easy that simple it is right very easy now you understood if you are given a set of triplet we can identify right we can identify whether it is a Pythagorean triplet or not but suppose you are saying that I want to form a Pythagorean triplet and I want 10 Pythagorean triplets to be formed how will you do that thinking how will you do that there is a way of doing it and that is there is a formula to do it I will give you that formula it is very interesting we are talking about Pythagorean triplet and this is nothing but this triplet of natural numbers so what we will do is we need to take two natural numbers let us say I take a natural number A and B so we are saying that if A and B are two natural numbers such that one number will be bigger than the other it says that we are saying that A is greater than B so what did I say the first condition is we have to consider two natural numbers take up any two natural numbers such that one is greater than the other so the two natural numbers we are saying is A and B such that A is greater than B then we can form the formula for getting that Pythagorean triplet is very simple then the three numbers are going to be what I am going to say now observe and the largest number of that is going to be the first the biggest one the largest one is going to be a square plus b square that means square of a square of b add it a square plus b square that is the largest number in that triplet the second the other two numbers would be the next number is a square minus b square and the next number is 2ab that is nothing but a Pythagorean triplet so it's very simple what did we learn if we take any two natural numbers a and b says that a is greater than b then the three numbers in the Pythagorean triplet are the biggest one the largest one is a square plus b square the next one is a square minus b square and the third one is 2ab that easy it is now you will say that is the formula let us verify whether this formula is correct that means let us check whether this three are Pythagorean triplets or not now I already taught you how to do that let us check we will take which is the biggest one this one so we will do the square of this then we will do the square of this and add this and let us check whether if they become equal then you can say yes this formula is correct let us verify it okay let us understand this now observe first one I am saying a square plus b square right we are doing this this is the largest number I am doing the square of this okay let us do the square of this this is in the form of a plus b the whole square so how do we expand it first term square so a square the whole square is how much a raised to 4 plus 2 into first term into second term so it is 2 into a square into b square it is 2a square b square plus second term square that means it is b square the whole square that means it is b raised to 4 that's our first one so we took the square of the largest number now let's do the next two numbers we'll first find the square and then we'll add it okay so the next number is a square minus b square let's do the square of that so let's expand it it is going to be a square the whole square that is a raised to 4 minus 2 into a square into b square that is 2 a square b square plus second term square that is b square the whole square that is b raised to 4 so we took the square of this now the last number which we have 2ab take the square of that it is nothing but 4 a square b square beautiful right now this is the square this is a square of the largest number we got the squares of the other two numbers we need to add them that means we are going to add this 2 and 3 beautiful we are going to add this 2 and 3 let's add the left hand side and add the right hand side let's do that now it's going to be beautiful observe this very carefully we added it so that's the left hand side now that's the right on the right hand side do we have any like terms yes 
a square b square 2 a square b square minus 2 a square b square and this is plus 4 a square b square like terms add it what do we get minus 2 plus 4 is plus 2 that means we'll get plus 2 a square b square that is what we get observe this let's say this is our result number 4 Now observe. Look at the right hand side of result number one and result number four. Are they equal? Yes, they are equal. That means we are saying that we can say that the left hand side there are equal. That means we are saying that a square plus b square the whole square is equal to a square minus b square the whole square plus two ab the whole square. That means. that formula which we said is correct that is nothing but it is a pythagorean triplet is it that easy very simple so now we have understood the formula let's create one pythagorean triplet on our own let's do that we know the pythagorean triplet first one is going to be a square plus b square the second one is a square minus b square and the third one is 2ab but what are a and b they are two natural numbers a greater than b let's do that so let's take up a is equal to 5 and i'm saying b is equal to 3 so these are the two natural numbers a greater than b right let's do the first number in the triplet the largest number in the triplet in the pythagorean triplet is nothing but a square plus b square so let's find it what is that a square means 5 square plus b square means 3 square 5 square is 25 so it is 25 plus 3 square is 9 25 plus 9 is 34 that means the largest number we got Let's see the next two numbers. The next two numbers is going to be a square minus b square. That means it is five square minus three square. Five square is twenty-five. Three square is nine. Twenty-five minus nine is nothing but sixteen. And the next one we get is two ab. That is two into five into three. Two into five is ten. Ten into three is thirty. That is what we got here. That means we are saying here thirty-four, sixteen. 30 is nothing but is a pythagorean triplet now we could create a pythagorean triplet like this now you take any two natural numbers and one is greater than the other just apply this and you can create as many pythagorean triplets as possible isn't that interesting it's a beautiful thing and yes please do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon